Temperatures are heating up all around the nation. And Star, just how hot is it here on the western slope? Well, Jillian, here in Grand Junction, our temperatures and highs did reach 97 degrees today, so a really hot one, and we can expect for things to nearly hit triple digits by the rest of this weekend, so it's going to be a really hot one out there, for sure. Great. <laughs> it's very hot, and when, will, when do you expect it to cool down? Uh, we're going to see temperatures make a slight cool down into the week, but we're still looking at high 90s um, into the rest of the work week. So we're not going to get much of a break, but temperatures, like I said, are going to be in the 90s. The sun is going to be out. We might see some mostly sunny skies out there. Clouds are going to be moving through, but that sun is going to be sticking around. So it's going to be hot out there. Great. <laughs> be prepared. It's going to be hot out there. So Grand Junction and the Western Slope continue to do their part in helping the fight against homelessness and for people in need. At today's resource fair in Grand Junction, help and hope were everywhere. We sent Rob Hagan to check it out, and he's standing by live in the studio with details. Rob. That's right, Jillian. Grand Junction is the place to be, and this resource fair just shows how much this community cares about its residents. The Mesa County Fair is in town serving entertainment, but another fair is also here serving human needs and changing lives. When you're overwhelmed, homeless, low income, maybe you're struggling and afraid you might become homeless, to have someone greet you with a smile and be able to say, let me get you to the right person and actually have it happen, changes your life. To start changing lives, the resource fair starts with providing the basics free of charge. We're talking clothing, help with identification, food, um, getting medical support in different ways. The resource fair has a lot to offer to those needing a little help and one of these free services is a blood screening which is tough for those scared of needles like me but necessary for peace of mind. Peace of mind is good, but the feeling of a fresh cut is even better. If you have a nice haircut cleaned up, for some reason in our society, that's okay. You know, so our peeps are treated a little bit with a little bit more respect, and and it's uh, and it helps you feel better too. And feeling better is what Colorado is all about, and the main attraction of what brings people here. I only been in Colorado 12 days, and uh, I chose to come here because I wanted a new start. There's something magical here for me. Today's resource fair was a huge success. Dozens of people attended and received a big helping of encouragement. First on the Western Slope and live in the studio, I'm Rob Hagan with KREX 5 News. Jillian? Grand Junction is considered a Colorado melting pot full of culture. A new wave of hip-hop dancing added to the mix earlier today. This unusual dance step is more than just a cultural expression. These young dancers are trying to raise money for a new hip-hop dance competition. The idea is to bring hip-hop back to the western slope. These young people say this is a great way to express themselves. So it's, it's like a mix of like, it's not really a sport, but it's like a mix of like a sport and then like an art. You know, so that's, and I, did, I just think it's really helpful for a lot of people because it's kind of their way of expressing. This afternoon's dance-off was sponsored by Monumental Movement and the Hip Hop Spot. Countless lives are saved in rural areas thanks to Care Flight of the Rockies. And they received a donation to ensure they keep making those rescues here on the Western Slope. KREX 5's Mike Kretz has the story. Care Flight is a very important part of our community. You hope you don't need them, but when you do, uh, you, they need to be available. And Care Flight of the Rockies' availability might be getting better, thanks in part to a donation made Friday by Chevron. I work for a great company, and it makes me very proud that, you know, we're willing to commit to the communities that we work and live in. Fundraising efforts are underway to get Care Flight of the Rockies handheld radios. Communication is probably the biggest challenge we face, for sure, and uh, having access to Good communication both in the air and on the ground is, is absolutely instrumental to what we do. What they do is save lives. This past April, we met Rob Schroden, who was rescued by Care Flight of the Rockies in 2018. They did an amazing job. I'm really grateful. 
for everything they did. They saved my life. Careflight of the Rockies director says their service is a source of pride for the community. There's just a sense of pride, and when there's a sense of pride, I think there's a, um, a sense of contribution and people wanting to, you know, give back and ensure that this resource is around for a very long time. And with donations like the one made by Chevron Friday, it will be a service more equipped to serve the Western Slope. I just can't tell you how incredibly grateful we are for their uh, contribution and for all of their support over the years. That was Mike Kretz reporting. CareFlight also received a much needed grant from the state because these handheld radios aren't cheap. The new equipment will cost somewhere in the neighborhood of $80,000. Still to come on KREX 5 News, we have an update on bones found near Vatican City and tensions are continuing to rise with Iran. We'll be right back. This summer, book two separate qualifying stays at choicehotels.com and earn a $50 gift card. Because when your business is rewarding yourself, our business is you. Book direct at choicehotels.com. You're not holding about the legs, are you? No, I'm not. Oh, oh. <laughs> Gorilla Glue. Of course. <laughs> Gorilla Glue is incredibly strong and versatile, mm -hmm. even outdoors, <laughs> for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. When objects in your mirror are actually much closer than they appear. Get it to Gerber. Gerber Collisioning Glass. With 300 days of sunshine, of course you're going to get out and explore, whether you're hiking, biking, boating, or climbing. Make sure you're prepared for the day. Know if you need to pack that jacket or bring a little extra sunscreen. Watch Carry X5 and Fox 4 for the most accurate and up-to-the-minute weather forecast. So you can get out and play the Western Slope way. You're watching KREX 5 News. Welcome back. Today, thousands of bones were uncovered near Vatican Cemetery. A genetic expert says the bones appear to be from dozens of individuals. The expert, Giorgio Portera, said the enormous size of the collection under the Teutonic College was revealed when Vatican-appointed experts began cataloging the remains. Portera is working on behalf of the family of Emanuela Orlandi, who vanished at age 15 after she left her family's Vatican City apartment for a music lesson in Rome. A Vatican statement made no mention of the number of remains in the newly discovered space but said the forensic work would resume on July 27th. This morning, Britain is warning Iran of what is described as serious consequences if Iran does not release a British-flagged tanker that it seized in the Persian Gulf. CBS correspondent David Martin has the story. That's correct. That's we were traveling with General Frank McKenzie in Afghanistan when those two British tankers were seized. He told CBS News exactly what happened. The first ship was flying a British flag as it passed through the Strait of Hormuz at the mouth of the Persian Gulf. She was fired upon, subsequently boarded, taken under Iranian custody, and it's now deep in Iranian territorial waters. The second British tanker was flying a Liberian flag. The Iranians boarded her. We believe they searched for British persons, found none, and then eventually allowed her to continue her voyage. Three hours later, an American flag cargo ship the Maersk Chicago went through the strait with what McKenzie called iron overhead, meaning F-18 jet fighters flying air cover. The Iranians left it alone. The U.S. now has destroyers stationed at either end of the strait. Do those destroyers have orders to intervene if they see another ship hijacking? They would only do so in the case of a U.S. flagged vessel coming under attack. President Trump has made it clear he does not want a war with Iran, and General McKenzie told CBS News the U.S. military is determined not to overreact. Well, 2,000 people laced up their shoes to participate in Run to the Moon in Wapakoneta. But this year is a little different because they are running on the same day that Neil Armstrong took his famous first step. 
Runners and walkers from 19 states took part in this year's run. Some former astronauts from Ohio were on hand to sign autographs, encourage runners, or even participate in the run themselves. And being in Wapakoneta was a great way to honor Armstrong's legacy and his impact on the future. 50 years ago, he put his foot on the moon, and it was for everybody. You know, they really, it wasn't about him and never was. And so we're here to just celebrate Neil today. This place really puts the, you know, the cherry on the, on the cake there. Really, uh, we understand that we have his legacy to fulfill and, and continue on. So it's, it's a big deal to be here on the 50th, and we, we have much further to go. Participants could either run in a 10K, 5K, or a one-mile fun run. When we come back, Star Harvey will have our full weather forecast, so don't go anywhere.